step into the world of power, loyalty, and luck. I'm gonna make him an offer he can't refuse. With family, cannolis, and spins mean everything. Now, you wanna get mixed up in the family business. Introducing The Godfather at ChompaCasino.com. Test your luck in the shadowy world of the Godfather slot. Someday, I will call upon you to do a service for me. Play the Godfather, now at ChampaCasino.com. Welcome to the family. VGW Group, no purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. See terms and conditions, 18 plus. Welcome to the Eric Erickson Show podcast, Hour 2. Hello, America. Welcome. It is Eric Erickson here. I'm delighted to have you with me. The phone number is 877-973-7425. Should you wish to be on the program, I would really like to have you. Um, but you got to be relevant to the conversation. And the conversation right now turns to the press corps. You know, increasingly on Twitter... Elon Musk has actually done a pretty terrible job of Twitter. Uh, the only people who like it are the people who like to fluff up Elon Musk, uh, the regular users of Twitter now. There are uh, way more bots. Um, there is way more misinformation circulating from nefarious groups. Uh, you know, he, he's, he certainly has alienated a lot of progressives, which people on the right have liked, but uh, when you're you're got a bunch of anti-Semites, neo-Nazis, and and bot pro-Russian, pro-China bot accounts, uh, the site is less and less useful. The way you interact with people, it's you're it's harder and harder to interact with people who are people you follow. He's just done a terrible job, and he's proud of doing a terrible job, which makes it more annoying. He's running the site into the ground. He has some idea for the site that no one who uses the site likes. I find myself increasingly moving to threads, uh, which is the, the Facebook equivalent. But I did see a story on Twitter yesterday, and I didn't believe the story. It's it, increasingly when you see something on Twitter, uh, you should not believe the story unless it's verified by other sources because of the level of misinformation willfully being disseminated on the site. And the allegation in the tweet was that news outlets, including CNN and the Associated Press, the BBC and others, had individuals on their payroll who had participated in the October 7th terror attacks. Sounds preposterous, doesn't it, that the reporters for CNN and the Associated Press and others were on October 7th in Israel killing Jews? Turns out it's true. One so far has been identified. He was a freelance reporter and photographer for the Associated Press and for CNN. Both have parted ways with him now. He embedded with the terrorists to document their atrocities, but on his Facebook um, feed, showed himself with the terrorists at the attacks, throwing grenades, among other things. An actual enemy of the people. Killing Jews in Israel. On the payroll. Now, CNN and the AP go, well, he wasn't, he wasn't on the payroll that day. He's a freelancer, and we weren't paying him that day. One of the dirty little not-so-secrets is that if you want to be a reporter in Gaza, you have to be approved by Hamas. Otherwise, you die. Because the freelance reporters in Gaza who cover what's happening in Gaza for the networks, if they misstate anything, if they say something critical of Hamas, if they, if they tell the truth, in ways that undermine Hamas, they and their families get killed. So they have great incentive to support Hamas propaganda. The the, the death toll, the, the we've got 10,000 people dead, blah, 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 whatever. These are enemies, terrorists. The New York Times has on their payroll a man who praised Hitler and said the problem with Hitler is he didn't move fast enough to eliminate the Jews. That 
that's an actual thing that this man believes and the New York Times is paying this person to cover Gaza. Do you really think you're going to get fair coverage from this guy? So to review, and this is important that you understand this, multiple media outlets from the Associated Press to CNN to the BBC have been paying individuals who participated in the October 7th terror attacks on Israel and paying them for their reporting. One of them has now been identified and on his Facebook page was seen throwing a grenade on October 7th, not just reporting. And members of the media today, well, they are defending having people like that on the payroll. It's what we must do to cover it. We embed people all the time with powers. I'm I'm sorry, y'all. But Rashida Tlaib was on MSNBC on Chris Hayes' show. She was defending herself and trying to claim that the river to sea rhetoric isn't about genocide, and everyone knows it's about genocide. Apparently, the only person on planet Earth who doesn't believe it's about genocide is Rashida Tlaib. MSNBC, and and this can't be said directly enough, MSNBC is the Hamas News Network. The only exception to that is Joe Scarborough and Mika Brzezinski on Morning Joe. Morning Joe is the only show on MSNBC where you get a balanced coverage of what's happening in Israel. The moment Joe Scarborough is off the air until the moment he comes back on, the network descends further and further into Hamas propaganda. It is obscene. If MSNBC were around in the 1930s and 40s, MSNBC would have on the Nazis letting them defend their actions and blast the Jews. There's no difference between what they're doing with Hamas than what they would do with the Nazis. Allowing Hamas propagandists to come on MSNBC and slam the Jews in Israel and anyone who defends the Jews in Israel is obscene. And now we know a bunch of news networks have been paying people who participated in the October 7th attacks and members of the media are like, well, I mean, we embed people with American soldiers. What's different? What's different is you're embedding with the good guys, not the terrorists. Not only that, more and more video is coming out that these would-be reporters are collaborators with the terrorists, helping the terrorists. We've got video of one of them with his gun and with his grenade killing Jews. Do you think it's an isolated incident that Hamas rounded up a group of pro-Hamas reporters and said, hey, come with us on October 7th. You might get to kill a Jew too. And they did. What happens on MSNBC is offensive. And it should be to everyone. I mean, they're allowing these people to come on and give the Hamas talking points. They claim to be pro-Palestinian, but if they were pro-Palestinian, shouldn't they be telling Hamas to lay down their arms, release the hostages, because all the violence would go away immediately? But they're not. They're not doing that. They're giving the Hamas talking points. I want to see something. Um, Let's see. What is this? Was was this this guy? Um... Um, um, nope, 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 different, sorry, nope, That that's why I didn't say anything. We can move on from, from that, but the point. You've got MSNBC with a bunch of anchors and commentators siding with Hamas. There is no doubt in my mind they would be siding with Germany if this were the 1930s and 40s. They're siding with Hamas. Not only are they siding with Hamas, but a lot of these institutions are paying individuals who are complicit with Hamas. Donald Trump called the American press corps the enemy of the people. And ever since, ever since, They've worked very hard to prove him right. Look, I'm not a 
fan of Donald Trump's? But he knew how to play the media. He lived in a sick symbiotic relationship with the media. But he got the media is not our friend. And he opened people's eyes to the fact that the media is not our friend. I mean, those of us on the right, those of us who are conservatives, we've known for a long time the media is of the left. And they've tried in the past to kind of nuance it and balance it and both sides it. But more and more explicitly, since Donald Trump became president, they just let, let, let the veneer off. They don't like conservatives. They don't like Republicans. They hated Donald Trump. They refused to give him a fair shake. Look at their coverage of the trials. I mean, the judge in New York in the current trial. The judge in New York in the current trial is willfully out to get Donald Trump and really doesn't care. And the media won't cover his partisan biases. But it's one thing to do that about an American politician who the media doesn't like. But my goodness gracious, you've got members of the press paying people who were complicit with Hamas on October 7th. These really are the enemy of the people. They actually literally killed people, and they've been on the media payroll. You've got the New York Times who hired a man who's praised Hitler, who said the only bad thing Hitler did was not move fast enough to eliminate the Jews. They paid this. They're paying this guy. And, and notice how the reporters are circling the wagons to defend their institutions and defend the media as a whole. They are less liked in this country than, than ingrown toenails, and they can't figure out how to redeem themselves. Well, you can't redeem yourself when you're mouthing off in favor of terrorists and trying to defend putting them on the payroll. We need these places to go bankrupt. Now, before I get out of here, let, let me go on and take a phone call. Sue, I want to take your phone call. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. Um, no, I just wanted to, I wanted you to clarify uh, a little bit because I've been listening to you and, and I just want you to clarify, you know, your thoughts on uh, DeSantis and Haley. And because I am from Florida and we have a home in North Carolina. And uh, I mean, it's very obvious that you're a real, you know, DeSantis and Haley fan and not a Trump fan. And, um, and so I just want you to clarify all that because your one guy said that it's not your opinion about DeSantis and Haley but yet you have opinions on Trump because, you know, I just want everybody to know that DeSantis, you know, Florida is not as red as people think. And we have to be very, if we're going to, if we're going to be honest about everything and hit both sides of, you know, and uh, because I'm not from here, actually, I'm from, I'm from a, a, a socialist country and I understand the banana Republic really, really well. I've lived it my whole life. And, um, and so I just was curious as to, cause I'm a little bit confused as to, um, you know, as I listen to you on your radio show, um, you know, obviously you're not a Trump fan and that's fine. Everybody has their opinions, whatever. Um, but I think that we need to like what happened with DeSantis and Haley, uh, you know, in the debate yesterday. I mean, to them, the first thing they said was they come out and they smash Trump. Well, don't you think that as, com- you know, like Reagan said, we should come together and yes, talk about policy. Well, OK, smash- yes, I, I, you know, I, I want, agree with, with you on that. Was- but it, yeah. it's also worth noting that, yeah, that they've bashed Trump, but Trump's bashed them, too. Donald Trump has spent more money attacking Ron DeSantis than attacking Joe Biden. In fact, DeSantis has spent, uh, weathered more money against him than all the other candidates combined. Uh, and, and then they're, they're saying, look, I like Nikki Haley. She's a personal friend. I don't know Ron DeSantis well. I've met him a couple of times. Um, and I think they would be better. As you just said, Sue, it's notable that you say Florida is not as red a state as people say it is. Yes, and that's a, a credit to DeSantis that he could increase his margin of victory by 20 points in a state that's not as red as, you, as, as people think it is. And he was able to do that and run as a conservative governor and a pro-business governor. Nikki Haley, I think, would be a great alternative. Listen, when you look at all the polling out there in America right now, whether you believe it or not, I think it's notable that Haley beats Joe Biden more handily than every other candidate, including DeSantis. I think they're great alternatives to Trump. I, I, I'm not a fan of Donald Trump's. We lost the 2018 midterms. We lost the 2020 presidential election and lost the Senate in the runoff. We lost the 2022 midterms with candidates tied to Trump. We've just lost elections in 2023 and had too close to call elections in 2023. So we won in 2016 against Hillary Clinton, and we've been losing ever since. And the only common denominator is Donald Trump. I think the GOP has a better chance of winning in 2024 if you find someone else. 
And if you pour all of your energy into getting Donald Trump elected, you've only got him for four years. As opposed to Haley or DeSantis, you got potentially for eight years. So why emotionally and financially invest in four years when you got the potential for eight with someone else? It, look, if Donald Trump's the nominee, I'd far prefer him to Joe Biden. But I think that most Americans would far prefer someone else to Donald Trump. And if you give them someone else, you crush Joe Biden. And at the end of the day, it's far better for all of us if we crush Joe Biden and the Democrats. And we have a better chance of doing that with someone whose last name is not Donald Trump. Guys, if you're a small, mid-sized business, you're struggling with HR issues, you have employees not showing up, or you got to do a termination, you need onboarding of employees, maybe there's a sexual harassment complaint, you want an HR manager. You don't want to be the bad guy with your employees. Bambi can play the role of HR for you. $99 a month, available by phone, email, real-time chat. They do onboardings, terminations. They help your team members get to peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations regardless of which state. They're great. Now, they're U.S.-based. They you got somebody to talk to who's dedicated to your team. They give you access to HR expertise, and they add personal touches. So even though they're outsourced by your company, they really feel like they're a part of your team. That matters. Go to Bambi.com right now. Type in Eric Erickson under podcast. When you sign up, it'll help my show. Bambi.com, B-A-M-B-E-E.com, Bambi.com, Eric Erickson in the podcast tab. Step into the world of power, loyalty, and luck. I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. With family, cannolis, and spins mean everything. Now, you want to get mixed up in the family business. Introducing The Godfather at ChompaCasino.com. Test your luck in the shadowy world of The Godfather slot. Someday, I will call upon you to do a service for me. Play The Godfather now at ChompaCasino.com. Welcome to the family. VGW Group, no purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus. Hello there. It is Eric Erickson here. The phone number is 877 973 7425. Should you wish to be on the program, you should know the New York Times has just released this statement. The accusation that anyone at the New York Times had advanced knowledge of the Hamas attacks or accompanied Hamas terrorists during the attacks is untrue and outrageous. It is reckless to make such allegations, putting our journalists on the ground in Israel and Gaza at risk. The Times has extensively covered the October 7 attacks and the war with fairness, impartiality, and an abiding understanding of the complexities of the conflict. The advocacy group Honest Reporting has made vague allegations about several freelance photojournalists working in Gaza, including Youssef Masoud. Though Youssef was not working for the Times on the day of the attacks, he has since done important work for us. There is no evidence for Honest Reporting's insinuations. Our report of his work shows that he was doing what photojournalists always do during major news events, documenting the tragedy as it unfolded. We also want to speak in defense of freelance photojournalists working in conflict areas whose jobs often require them to rush into danger to provide firsthand witness accounts and to document important news. This is the essential role of a free press in wartime. We are gravely concerned that unsupported accusations and threats to freelancers endanger them and undermine work that serves the public interest. Notice what the statement does not say that the New York Times photographer didn't have advanced notice of the Hamas attack. Pretty damning omission on that. Also, they say they've covered it with fairness. What about that hospital in Gaza? Hmm? Let's talk about Vision Computer and the great deals you can get from them. They are good people, and they build world-class computers. I mean, top-notch stuff, and they save you money. You can't go to the big box store and get a computer like what Vision can build for you custom made for your needs and wants and desires and the ability to grow with you over time. And then they service it for you. Unlike the big box stores, you get a phone number in 15 seconds or less. If there's a problem or an issue or you've got just a random question on how to do something, they answer the phone, they give you the answer quicker than a Google search. All you have to do is go to visioncomputers.com, visioncomputers.com. Any of you from Kalispell, Montana to Miami, Florida, you can call them anywhere in the nation, and then they can build your computer and service it for you. You can also call them, 404-COMPUTE, anywhere in the nation, call them, 404-COMPUTE. Tell them I sent you, visioncomputers.com or 404-COMPUTE. Let them build your computers and then be your own in-house IT department. It's Vision Computers. They'll save you money and build you a great machine. 
Hey guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere And each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void or prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Hello there. Welcome. It is Eric Erickson here. The phone number 877-973-7425. All right. So I have a question for listeners in Greensboro, Georgia, Lake Oconee. Uh, my buddy Drew is coming down hunting this weekend from North Carolina. And we're going to meet halfway, and that's uh, Lake Oconee, and hang out. And we need, like, a good dive bar recommendation. I don't want fancy, uh, so I don't want Reynolds Plantation. Or, I'm sorry, now it's Reynolds Lake Oconee because you're not supposed to say plantation. But Reynolds Plantation, you know what I mean. Um, so... Where's a good recommendation? You can email me, eric, E-R-I-C-K, at ewerickson.com. I need a good dive bar in Lake Oconee to hang out tomorrow night. Now, I want to talk about absolutely uh, unrelated to the debate, to Hamas, to anything uh, related to any of that sort of stuff. I wish to talk about Young Thug. None of you have any idea who Young Thug is, I suspect. But you should know who Young Thug is. Young Thug is a gangbanger rapper in Georgia. And Young Thug is on trial in the state of Georgia. And you know who's prosecuting Young Thug? Fawny Willis. Fawny Willis is the district attorney who is, well, dealing with the Trump situation. Now, these are related. And so if you want to understand the Trump case in Georgia, you need to understand the Young Thug case in Georgia. Young Thug, YSL, he's a rapper and is tied to a gang in Georgia. A RICO case is at stake in Georgia on this. It's a RICO case where it took them nine months to seat a jury. Actually, 10 months to seat a jury. Because you see, one of the things in RICO is when when you charge all these people, each of them get a lawyer, and each lawyer gets to participate in voir dire to pick the jury, and that takes a very long time. It took them 10 months to find the jury. Right now in the Young Thug case in Atlanta, Georgia, that Fonnie Willis is pursuing as a RICO case with the senior judge, uh, Euro Glanville, who is an expert in doing these RICO cases. It took him 10 months to do the jury with all those defendants. And he's now made a decision that he'll allow some rap lyrics to be presented to jurors if prosecutors can lay the foundation for how the words pertained to real-world crimes committed by Young Slime Life members, YSL members. That's the name of the gang, Young Slime Life, and Young Thug is the rapper. The defense objected to this. The defense said that these were just lyrics, that they were fiction, and the, the prosecutor handling the trial, Mike Carlson, argued that it's not about rap lyrics, but gang lyrics. What the prosecutor contends is that the tracks glorify uh, Young Slime Life's alleged criminal activities, including the fatal shooting of at least three rival gang members, the targeting of others, and violence against police. The lyrics themselves aren't crimes, but evidence of the crimes. Now, the defense attorneys have said that the lyrics were just fiction and they were creative expression. A lot of music executives and artists are claiming that this is about hip-hop on trial. Let me be clear here. Fawny Willis and the prosecution's claim is that these lyrics were about glorifying the criminal acts that previously happened. 
regardless of what they're bragging about, is she's got, and the judge says she's got an argument here. Listen, if the rap lyrics are bragging about murdering a gang member and it actually happened and you're using details of the murder inside the rap lyrics, you're darn right. It's evidence that you're admitting to the crime. When you describe the crime and the ancillary details in your rap lyrics, well, yes, you're bragging about having committed the crime. What the what the what the defense says is that oh my gosh people are going to hate the rap lyrics and they're going to blame them whether they're guilty or not they're going to hate the lyrics and say they're guilty well then don't make your rap suck Some of you are wondering how on God's good earth Erickson is the young slime life gang tied to Donald Trump Are you trying to make some insinuation about slime life and Trump Erickson? No, 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 no. You just, you, you just hear me out. Just hear me out. This is what? The second week of November in 2023. The proceedings against Young Slime Life and Young Thug, the the gang and the rapper, they began in January of 2023. It took 10 months to pick the jury for the YSL case. Only now that the jury is picked, are they going back and forth to court squabbling over the evidence to be used and whether or not rap lyrics can be used in the case against YSL. In other words, there is no way on God's good earth that the Atlanta case against Donald Trump will proceed at a reasonable speed next year. It is very likely that the case will be put off for a year or two. When you watch a TV show about crime. You know, when you're, I I want you to put yourself in the shoes of a doctor. I know you're not a doctor, but just put yourself in the shoes of a doctor. You're watching a TV show about doctors. You're watching Grey's Anatomy or some, watching the the old show, um, um, oh, what is it? Chicago Hope or whatever. You're, You're watching a hospital drama. You're watching ER reruns. And you, the doctor, watching the show, say, wait, that's not true. That's not right. That's garbage. That's not true. This is so unbelievable. How on earth? That's how lawyers feel watching criminal shows. Law and Order does a pretty good job. But a lot of legal procedurals, what happens? You go to court and there's a shocking revelation made on the stand. I can't believe we didn't know this. It's all crap. And here's why. You don't that doesn't happen in trial. Why? Because in a trial, what happens is the prosecutor has to give the defense every single bit of evidence. In a civil trial, the prosecutor, the, the, the plaintiff has to give the defendant everything the plaintiff has, and the defendant has to give everything to the plaintiff that the defendant has. It's called request for production of documents. It's called interrogatories. You do depositions. You ask all the questions. So by the time you go to court, everybody on every side knows the evidence that's going to be presented. The bias in a criminal trial is in favor of the defendant. So the prosecutor has to hand over every single piece of exculpatory evidence to the defense. Every single thing the prosecutor has has to be given to the defense. And they argue about what's going to be presented. And the defense gets the right to object. The prosecutor gets the right to object. They get to right to object to each other. So by the time you go to trial... The defense attorneys and the prosecutors know everything the other side is going to produce and say there are no surprises. This does not happen. What you see on TV is not real. They get everything. You're not allowed to keep information from the defense. There are no surprises. 
So think about the people who've pled guilty so far. You've got um, Jen Ellis. You've got uh, Sidney Powell. You got the bail bondsman, whatever his name was. Um, you got the other lawyer in there. You got a couple others that are coming. The defense team, the pro, the, the the Donald Trump team, they get to interview all of them. They get to ask them questions. What are you going to say? They, they get to know that. They, it's no surprise when they get on the stand and one of them says something that, that everyone else is less gasping about. It's no surprise the defense knows because they get to interview the people. They get to ask them questions. Before they're on the stand, they ask the question. This is why you learn in law school. You never ask a question you do not already know the answer to because you've had all of this time to ask the questions and get the information and get all the documentation and get all of the evidence and you've had time to review it. You get lots of time to review it. You are not rushed. Right now in the Young Slime Life trial, and the Young Thug trial, having gone for 10 months picking a jury, they are still arguing about the admissibility of rap lyrics and other evidence. One, I want you to see the fairness of the process. There aren't going to be any surprises. They can't drag their feet, but they can't be rushed. They get all the evidence. They get to interview all the potential witnesses. They they get to ask questions before you go to trial so they know what the person's going to say. And if they say something different on the stand than they said in the interview, then they get to be trapped by their contradictions. There will be no surprises. It will be a fair process. The other thing I need you to see is that there's no possible way that the trial of the former president of the United States and all of the other defendants can possibly happen expeditiously next year like Fawny Willis wants. She's blustered about this. She's done a good game. She's run the calendar well, but she can't get a trial of Donald Trump done in the next six months. She probably can't get it done in the next two years because of the mounds and mounds and mounds of evidence, the piles and piles of witnesses to be interviewed, all of the people she's taken pleas from, who the defense gets the right to examine and and understand what they're going to say and what their claims are going to be and what the arguments are going to be. If they can't prosecute a rapper expeditiously, how are they going to prosecute a former president of the United States expeditiously? The answer is they are not. This case is going to drag on for so long, Donald Trump may be dead before they get to it. He's almost 80 years old. I mean, he's on the other side of life expectancy at this point. God's got term limits. Donald Trump may run up against him before this trial manifests itself. That's how long it's going to take. That's not to say he's going to keel over dead tomorrow or next week or next year. It's to say this trial is going to take a long time. There are so many witnesses. There are so many defendants. It's going to take months on end just to pick a jury, let alone argue over the evidence and the admissibility of evidence and what evidence is going to be changed and who's going to say what and who's actually going to take the stand and the lineup of witnesses and all of that sort of stuff is going to take a long time. And there are still going to be more plea deals to come up in the meantime. You're going to find more people willing to take pleas. Most of them will take the pleas because they will not be able to afford to continue to fight the matter. And so they'll take a plea, stay out of jail, promise to testify, and they really don't have a lot to testify to. And you'll notice all the people who pled guilty so far have not pled guilty to RICO, the very thing at the heart of the litigation, which suggests the case is not as strong as the prosecutor claims he is. It's just not. It's not going to move as fast as she wants it to move. That's why it's relevant to look at the Young Slime Life trial and extrapolate to Donald Trump's trial. If it takes that long to try a group of rappers rappers in a RICO trial, how much longer is it going to take to try a former president and all those defendants? A lot. That's the answer. A lot longer. Now, I need to tell you about Patriot Mobile. It is a cell phone service that you can move to, and by moving to them, when you grow their profits, they grow their giving to the conservative. That's right. Keep your existing phone number with Patriot Mobile. And then you get all this great service. 
and they grow their profits, and they grow their giving to the conservative causes you care about. They even fund the campaigns of conservative parents battling the wokes on school boards. It's such a great deal, and it's such great service. You can go to patriotmobile.com slash Eric or call them at 972-PATRIOT. They have 100% U.S.-based customer service. If you go to patriotmobile.com slash Eric, you can put in your home address, zoom straight into your house, and see how good the 5G, the data of the voice is. Put in every address you tend to go. You can see how strong the service is, 5G data voice, all of it. PatriotMobile.com slash Eric or 972Patriot. Tell them I sent you. You get free activation with my name. Hey, guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun, too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere and each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Hello and welcome. It is Eric Erickson here across the United States of America. I'm delighted to have you with me. And the phone number, if you want to be on the show, 877-973-7425. This is John Kirby from the White House. Is a, is a pause just an hour here, an hour there, to quote the Prime Minister? Is that enough? We believe that uh, humanitarian pauses, and we talk about them in a plural sense, uh, should be for the length of time uh, and for the geographic scope that they need to be to accomplish whatever the goal is. So if you're talking about moving hostages out, if you're, if you're talking about a big body of hostages, if we're able to negotiate for a large number of the 240 or so that are being held hostage, then obviously you're going to want some flexibility here in how long it's going to take to move them safely from where they're being held to Israel and, and, and to safe ground. Uh, other humanitarian pauses could be for shorter duration. So I don't think we're ruling in or out any specific duration. Each pause uh, needs to be taken on its own merits for the goals that it's trying to achieve. They are going to announce pauses of a couple of hours uh, to allow Palestinian residents to flee and, and bring in medical crews, but not enough time for Hamas to rearm itself. There's some video circulating that's been confirmed by various outlets of Israel sent tanks into Gaza City and cleared out a path to the south for residents to flee. The Hamas um, terrorists had snipers on rooftops, and when the Palestinians tried to move south, they gunned them down. So the Israelis have moved in and are using their tanks to block the line of sight of the snipers so that the residents of Gaza can move south. Think about that. The leadership of Gaza is gunning down its own citizens who don't want to be used as human shields. Then you've got idiots in the United States on television complaining about Israel and genocide when it's Hamas itself that's responsible for it, but they don't care. By the way, it turns out um, the murderer in Los Angeles, alleged murderer of the Jewish man, is a college professor, a college professor who uh, eyewitnesses say stalked the Jewish man before violently shoving him into the concrete, breaking open his skull and causing his death. Uh, This is the second college professor who has uh, been arrested for anti-Semitism. There was a college professor, I think, in Illinois uh, that assaulted a young Jewish woman. Second, uh, what is it with these wackadoo college professors? I don't know. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandslots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.